Hello, and welcome to this course on Python Any, a powered up Boolean function. Free yourself from chains of OR. So if you've ever written code that might have various conditions and you find yourself chaining together with OR, so in this case, you can see that we have if X is true, or Y is true, or Z is true, or foo is true, then you do things. Now, there must be a easier way to write this, right? Well, there you go. Any is for you. Another way that any can be extremely handy is with eliminating unneeded for loops. So say you had this list of students that represented whether they passed the test or not. You have three false and one true. How you might approach this is you would have a sentinel value or a flag value called any pass, and you set that to false at the beginning. Then you create a for loop that goes through each student and checks if a particular student is true. If it is true, then you can set that sentinel value to true, which indicates that there has been one student that has passed, and then you can break out of the for loop because you don't need to check anymore. And then you can finally check at the end of your for loop that if any pass is true, then you can do things because at least one student has passed. However, with the any function, you can write all this code like this. More on that later. You're going to cover a bunch of stuff in this course about any, from its basic usage to how to eliminate or deal with long or chains. You're going to learn about how to use any with list comprehensions, which is a very powerful feature. You'll learn about the inverse, not any. You'll learn about how any evaluates values that aren't explicitly true or false. You'll learn some important differences between any and or, and when you might want to use one or the other. And you'll also learn what short circuiting is. So without further ado, coming up next is the basic usage of the any function. In this lesson, you're going to cover the basics of any. There are only a few things that you need to grasp to use any in its most basic form. The subtleties of the any function and how it works will be covered in more detail as you progress through the course. So the basics are, it accepts one argument, and that is an iterable. So that means it must be a list, a set, a dictionary, or a generator. And it returns one Boolean value. That is, it must be true or false. To illustrate, you're going to look at this fictional situation of a list of cities or selection of places that may be hotspots or not. And you're interested to know whether any of these places are hotspots. As you can see, this data has one true value. So our expected result is that this should be true. The first example is a list. There is just one true value. And the way you use this is you call the any function, which is built in, so you don't need to import it or anything. And then you just put in this variable, which in this case is a list, so it's valid. And it will return true, because there's at least one true value in this list. The same also works for set. So now we're overwriting the is hotspot variable with this new set, which has the same values. In this example, using a set doesn't make much sense because a set can only have unique values. So now it's being condensed to false and true. That said, you can still use the any function on it. And since there is at least one true value there, it will return true. This is also true of a generator. which is indicated by the normal brackets. This will return true, again, because there is at least one true value in this generator. And there you have it. That's the basics of using the any function. It accepts one iterable, and it returns one Boolean value. Next up, you're going to learn how to manage many OR conditions. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to manage many OR conditions or that is, how to avoid using the OR keyword and instead use any. To do this, you're going to learn about how to put Boolean values into iterables or variables into iterables. You're going to learn about the iterable unpacking operator 
and how this can be very useful in these situations. And you're also going to think a bit about how to avoid this situation in the first place. The task you're faced with is that you've reached a spot in your code in which you have all these variables. And here the values are shown. So perhaps it is that you're trying to visit somewhere and you're evaluating whether a particular location has any of these attributes, whether it's nice, it's near, whether it has family. This place doesn't have very much, but it does have family, so it might be worth a visit. You'll also note that good weather is in a list, and this is where the iterable unpacking operator will come into play. So first, a quick look at the iterable unpacking operator and preparing lists to be iterated over. Say, for example, you have these two lists. They have strings in them. One list is bowl, and that has two apples and a banana. The other list is shelf. It has some chocolate and cookies. So these are all strings, and you want them to be in a list called bag. So you can imagine you're packing your bag, and you want all these things in your bag. You might be tempted just to insert these items in a new list. However, what that creates is a two-dimensional list. As you can see, you have an outer list that contains two items, and each of those items is itself a list, one of which contains three items, the other contains two items. You can iterate over the outer list, but that will only return the list. It won't return the actual values. And what you're interested in for the following exercise are the individual values. One way to get around this is to initialize the list then use the extend method on that list and pass it in every other list. So now bag contains all the items that bowl contained. And if we repeat that operation with the shelf, then we have a one-dimensional list with all the values that is ready to be iterated over. What the iterable unpacking operator allows you to do is to write this all in one line. It is just syntactic sugar, which means it just makes things easier to read or easier to type. So there's not as much code to go over. So start by initializing the bag variable again. You initialize a list. And then within that, you use the two lists. However, instead of just executing it like this, in front of each list, you put the iterable unpacking operator. And now, when you look at bag, it will be complete and flat, which means just one dimensional with all the items and it's ready to be iterated over. So back to the example at hand. If you remember, you have all these variables that have Boolean values within them. And what you're looking for is a way to analyze all these variables and return a true value if any of these values are true. As you can see, has family is true, so you can expect a true value. Also note that good weather is a list, however. So you're going to need to take that into account while you're building the iterable that you're going to feed into the any function. Now, it's not ideal, but the way that you would do this, being in the situation that you have all these variables, is by initializing a new list and inserting all of the variables manually. You'll note the iterable unpacking operator before good weather to make sure that this is just a one dimensional list. And now if you look at condition, you'll see that you have a flat list of Boolean values that can easily be fed into the any function and return true as expected. As a shortcut, you don't have to go through the stage of creating a new variable, and you can instead just call the any function and inline initialize a new list and put all the variables in there with the unpacking operator on good weather. And that will also return true. Note, there's an interesting effect here that say you don't use the iterable unpacking operator and you take out has family because that's the only one that's true. So what you're left with is a list of mostly false values, but it also contains a list that contains false values. 
you might be tempted to think that this would evaluate to false if you do it with any, but it will actually evaluate to true. And this is because of the way that any evaluates values that aren't Boolean values directly. So it's going through every single item in the conditions list. It's going false, 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 false. And then it gets to a list and it says, okay, how am I going to translate this list into a Boolean value? It doesn't look within that list. It just says, does this list have any items? If it has items, I'm going to say it's true. If it's an empty list, it will say it's false. Anyway, there's going to be more about how any and or for that matter, deal with Boolean evaluation in a later lesson. And that's managing many or conditions. In this lesson, you put variables into a list. Now you did this before calling the any function by creating a new variable and creating a list within that variable. But you also did this in line, skipping the variable creation step and calling any and initializing a new list in line. You also use the iterable unpacking operator to expand a smaller list into a larger list. You also thought about how to avoid the situation in the first place. It's not ideal to end up with lots of variables. You can perhaps populate a list as you create the checks, or if you still want the names of the values, then you can create a dictionary. Next up, you're going to be looking at list comprehensions and their use with the any function.